Welcome to St. Margaret. We especially greet all visitors and guests who are with us to share in today's liturgy. We ask that you please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. The readings for today's Mass can be found on page 1040 of the Gather Hymnal. That's page number 1040. Today's Mass is being offered for Joseph and Francis Wren. Tonight we begin the Triduum, the great three days observed by the Church since the first Christians worshipped together. Let us join with them and with Christians everywhere this night as we hear Jesus speaking to us in the words of Scripture and as we come to the table to share with each other the banquet of life. Please stand and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 945, I am the bread of life, number 945. Come to me shall not hunger, and to believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will raise you up, and I will And I will raise you up on the last day. The bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you up. Up on the last day, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood. And drink of his blood, you shall not have life within you, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up. On the last day, I am the resurrection, I am the life, if you believe in me, even though you die. You, you shall have life within you, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up, and I will raise you up on the last day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the love of the Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We begin this sacred time of the church's year, where God has gifted us with both his priesthood and the Eucharist that we share. 
for the times in which we fail to be Eucharist to others, serving those in our midst that need service the most, we pause and ask our Lord for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal thy contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy, Christ eleison. Christ, have mercy, Christ eleison. You are seated at the right hand of thy Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love. Grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. 
tell the whole community of Israel, on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must pr procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to thy Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is our communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Our blessing call is our communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he, he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything in his power, and that he had come from God, and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and dry them with the towel about his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet, he put his garments back on and reclined at table again. He said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If therefore, if I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that I have that so that 
as I have done for you, you shall do also the gospel of the Lord. Good evening, and welcome to the beginning of our Easter Triduum celebration. I really hope that all of you can make um, all three of our celebrations. Of course, tonight, Holy Thursday, the evening of the Passion of the Mass of the Lord's Supper tomorrow will be Good Friday. Of course, that's at three o'clock over at St. Thomas, if you can make that. And of course, the Easter Vigil on Saturday evening, that'll be here. If you notice, all three of those... um, celebrations are all one continuous act. As you know, well, we're not going to end with the closing blessing this evening, right? Because that continues through a Good Friday. And of course, on Good Friday, we're not going to end with a closing blessing, not until Easter Vigil, because it's all one continuous celebration. So I really want to encourage all of us to try to make all three, if you're able. And as we gather this evening, I invite us to turn to the Blessed Mother. Of course, one of the Sacraments we commemorate this evening is the sacrament of the priesthood. And of course, Our Lady is the mother of all priests, and so we want to pray for all priests. Uh, Father Jamin, myself, please, all the priests in our diocese, and of course, in our country as well. And so let us pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Do you realize what I have done for you? Do you realize what I have done for you? That's a question tonight. Jesus poses to the apostles as he stoops down, after he stoops down and he washes their nasty, grimy feet. Do you realize what I have done for you? I don't think the apostles did. They couldn't have. I mean, here is, think about this for a moment. Here is the God-made man, the Word-made flesh, creator of the heavens and the earth, stooping down, to do what a common slave would have done at the time, stooping down to wash ordinary men's feet. Do you know what I have done for you? I remember uh, several years ago I did a retreat. It was a directed retreat that was several days long in silence, and I had a retreat director who gave me this passage, John chapter 13, He gave me this passage to pray with. So I went off and I sat down in a quiet place and I spent my hour meditating with this passage. And I remember very distinctly an image that the Lord that came to me, that Jesus came to me and I was sitting in the presence of one of the apostles and he came to me and he started washing my feet. I could almost feel like the water on my feet and But rather than like a towel that he wrapped on his waist, he had like a big brush like you find at the car wash. And he was like scrubbing my feet. I don't know what that meant. (laughs) Lots of sins. (laughs) And the Lord can be very humorous in prayer, right? That's just what came. And I was like, all right, Lord. But it made me, as he was scrubbing my feet like with a car wash brush, it made me very uncomfortable. Right? It made me a little uncomfortable. So I could, I could see why Peter was very reticent about allowing Jesus, the Messiah, to wash his feet. You know, the other day we had our, our senior retreat from St. Thomas Aquinas here, and one of the things they do during that retreat is they read this reading. One of the teachers read this reading to all the students and said, now we have a lot of buckets full of water outside in a circle. And she said, don't worry, you're not going to wash each other's feet. And there was like this certain like 
relief coming over the students, like, thank goodness, nobody's going to wash my feet. But I think there, there's a reticence, right, with our own hearts, there's this kind of recoil at the thought of allowing somebody else to wash our feet. It's going to happen in a moment, so get ready. We recoil at that, right? I don't want anybody to wash my feet. Much less what I want the Messiah, the Son of God, to wash my feet. Maybe just a common person, maybe somebody I know I can deal with that. Much less if it was Father that had to wash my feet, right? And much less, much less if it was Jesus. But here's the thing. It was Peter's pride It was Peter's pride that kept him from allowing Jesus to do what he wanted to do. He said to them as they they gathered around to celebrate this Passover meal, he said in John's gospel, I've longed for this. Excuse me, it's in Luke's gospel. I've longed to have this meal for you. I came not to be served, but to serve. And here he is doing just that. He wanted to do that. He desired to do that. And that is what Jesus desires to do for us. To, quote-unquote, wash our nasty, grimy feet. To serve us in that way. He goes on to tell the apostles this. He says, what I have done for you, now you must do for others. Right? What I've done for you, you must do for others. See, the truly serve others, we're all about, you know, this night is about fraternal charity. It's all about one of the things we do commemorate is the service of Christ and our call to serve others. But before we're going to serve others with the heart of Jesus, we have to allow ourselves to be served by him. I'll say that again. In order for us to serve others with the heart of Jesus and not just be some social worker out there who does humanitarian work, we have to allow ourselves to be served by him. And that can be very difficult. See, it sounds a bit strange to say that. But we can't give what we don't have. And when we serve others as Christians, yes, we may have the means to do that. We may have the financial means to help others, right? We may have the equipment to help them, to to wash their, their house, to wash their car, whatever they mean. We may have the time to go to the grocery store for them. We may have all of these things Right, the luxury to be able to serve them in this way. But ultimately, what is our goal as Christians? Right? We don't just want to serve maybe their bodily needs, which is first, but we want to give them Christ. Right? We, want, we want ultimately for them to be able to see Jesus in us. Otherwise, again, we're no different than just a humanitarian worker. You know, I was reading this gospel, and it reminded me of back in the fall, right, when all of those people were coming to St. Margaret's to be, uh, to be served, right, because of the, they experienced Hurricane Ida and all these things, and they got their bellies full, and they walked home with shampoo and soap and maybe some clothes and other stuff that was over there, right? They walked home with that, but the one thing that I hope they walked away with was they walked away being able to see Jesus' love through us. Because we want to ultimately serve others for him and to show him to others. But again, before we do that, we have to allow ourselves to be served by him. I want to end with this. You know, this evening, it marks the beginning of God's greatest service to humanity. The passion, the suffering, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. That is the greatest act of service ever. And it is God serving humanity. But there's something else before Jesus did that that we're going to celebrate tomorrow. 
And after he stooped down to wash his disciples, he did something else that was incredibly humble. He went even lower than a slave, if you will. He stooped down even lower than washing feet. After he washed the disciples' feet, he went lower. He gathered them around the, pot, the table and he took bread and he said, this is my body. He took wine and he said, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. He would become present and continues to become present in what looks like a piece of bread. What greater service can Jesus do for us? Think about that for a moment. What greater service did he do for the apostles, but then he continues to do for us at every single Mass? Our Lord humbles himself and stoops down and quote-unquote washes our feet by becoming what looks like bread and what looks like wine so that he can serve us in order for us to be able to serve others with him. Do you realize what I have done for you? I don't think the apostles got it. At that point, they didn't. But later on, they were able to grasp it. It's a question I want us to ask ourselves this evening. Do we realize what he has done for us and continues to do for us? I would say most especially in the Holy Eucharist an act that it was even more humble than washing feet. See, my dear friends, as well as we're able to answer that question, do I realize what Jesus has done for me? To the extent I'm able to answer that question with the positive, with the affirmative, will be the extent I'm able to follow the Lord in the very next command he gives his apostles. What I have done for you, you now must do for others. And so as we continue in this Easter Triduum, this Holy Thursday, let us first allow Jesus, who desires to do this, to stoop down, to wash, quote-unquote, to serve us, to wash our feet, so that we can turn around and wash the feet of others. So may God bless you, and may God be with you in this Easter Triduum. Amen. of his friends 
silently washes their feet. Master who pours out himself for them. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and bold, varied in color and race. Neighbors are nearby and far away. Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Yesu, Yesu, fill us your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should leave with you. Jesus, us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who pours out himself for them. Jesus, Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are nearby and far. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve, these are the ones we should love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneel at the feet of our friends, silently washing their feet. This is the way we should live with you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, Silently washes their feet, Master who pours out himself for them. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you.
charity and love prevail, their God is ever found. Brought here to gather by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now life got in return. Forgive we now each other's faults, as we our faults confess, and let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Because the glory that we seek be ours, God's holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst Twice God's begotten Son, as members of his body joined, we are in Christ made one. No race nor creed can love exclude, if honoured be God's name. Our family embraces all, whose father is the same. Where charity and love prevail, their God is ever found. Brought here to gather by Christ's love, by love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now life got in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess. And let us love each other well in Christian holiness. Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Because the glory that we seek be ours, God's holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst dwells God's begotten Son. As members of his body joined, we are in Christ made one. No race nor creed can love exclude, if honoured be God's name. Our family embraces all, whose father is the same. Where 
charity and love prevail, fair God is ever found, brought here to gather by Christ's love, I love are we thus bound. With grateful joy and holy fear, God's charity we learn. Let us with heart and mind and soul now love God in return. Forgive we now each other's faults as we our faults confess and let us love each other well in Christian holiness let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Be God the glory that we seek. Be ours God's holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst Wills God's begotten Son, as members of his body joined, we are in Christ made one. No race nor creed can love exclude. If honoured be God's name, our family embraces hope, whose father is the same. Love one, I neither 
as I have loved you. Care for each other, I have cared for you. Brothers and sisters, called to the service of God's people, the church, let us turn to the Father and renew ourselves to a life of service and of prayer. For Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, our Pastor, Father Jamin, for Father Paul, Deacon Bird, Deacon Tim, and all the clergy, that the Lord may bless them and strengthen them in their commitment to serve us in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the Holy Land, the sacred soil of the first Passover in the New Covenant, and for peace throughout the whole world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lay ministers of the parish, that the Lord will bless them with wisdom and inspiration in the performance of the special task that they have been given. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect and the candidates for full communion who will enter the church at the Easter Vigil, that they may heed the Lord's call to service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the needy, that through our care and concern, we may fulfill Christ's commandments to live and serve one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, believing in the gift of eternal life, may they know the Lord's love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we pray for our needs and for the special intentions of others. Lord, you raise us to new life through our service and love for your people. Strengthen us that we may become your presence in the world, fulfilling your commandment to love one another as you have loved us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing our offertory hymn number 918. In the breaking of the bread, number 918.
Tuesday at the Chrism Mass at St. Joseph Cathedral in Baton Rouge, Bishop Duca blessed and prepared the oils that will be used sacramentally in our parish throughout the coming year. We now present to the people of St. Margaret these sacred oils. The oil of the sick. This oil has been blessed by our bishop for the healing of body, mind, and soul. May the sick that are anointed with it experience the compassion of Christ and his saving love. The oil of the catechumens. This oil of catechumens has been blessed by our bishop for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. Through this anointing, they may strengthen by Christ to resist the power of Satan and reject evil in all its forms as they prepare for the saving waters of new life. The Holy Chrism. This Holy Chrism, a mixture of olive oil and perfume balsam, has been consecrated by our bishop and the priest of our diocese. It will be used to anoint after baptism those who are to be confirmed, bishops and priests, at their ordination and the altars and churches at the time of their dedication.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of the sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the to you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants for whom we now pray. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is today, 
He took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, Proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant that some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in singing number 939, Behold the Lamb, number 939. who were in the dark are thankful for the sunlight. We who live, we who die, are grateful for this King. Thankful for God's love. Behold Behold the Lamb of God. All who eat, all who drink shall live. And all, all who dwell in God shall come to know. God's glory. Peaceful now, those whose hearts are blessed with understanding. 
of the wheat, of the wine, united with God's word, and the love we share. Behold, behold the Lamb I've got, all who eat, all who drink shall live, and all, all who dwell in God shall come to know God's glory. Gentle one, child of God, join with us at this table. Bless our lives, nourish all who hunger for this feast. Shelter them with peace. Behold, behold the Lamb I've got. All who eat, all who drink shall live, and all, all who dwell in God shall come to know God's glory. Lord of all, give us light, deliver us from evil. Make us one, be our shield, make still the winds that blow. Cradle us with love. Behold, behold the Lamb I've got. All who eat, all who drink shall live, and all, all who dwell in God shall come to know God's glory.
Just a few announcements before we conclude this evening. Uh, remember tomorrow's schedule, we will pray the Way of the Cross traditionally here at St. Margaret Church at 12 p.m. Our Good Friday service will be at St. Thomas Chapel in Springfield. That'll be at 3 o'clock, which will include the veneration of the cross, the reading of the Passion, and also our Eucharistic liturgy. Uh, also tomorrow night, our youth group in the parish hall will have two renditions of their passion play. It's the same thing, but uh, to, to get everybody in the building, we'll have one at 6 and one at 7.30 p.m., and our youth groups work very hard, so we hope that you join us for that passion play tomorrow evening. And also, our parish office will be closed at observance of Good Friday, so we'll see you again next week over in the parish office. And don't forget our schedule of Masses for the weekend. The Easter Vigil and the Holy Night on Holy Saturday is at 8.00 p.m. here at St. Margaret Church. Thus, there are no confessions, also no 4 p.m. Vigil Mass on Holy Saturday. And Easter Sunday Masses will be at 8 o'clock at St. Thomas in Springfield, and then 10 o'clock and 5.30 here at St. Margaret. Uh, bring your rice bowls back during Holy Week. We appreciate your generosity and almsgiving during this Lenten season. And again, don't forget about adult confirmation classes that are beginning soon. Contact Deacon Bird or Miss Darlene Jandusa if you'd like a little bit more information. In a few moments, we will begin our procession with the Blessed Sacrament to to the altar of repose, which will be over in the St. Margaret room of the Hall of Saints. There you will be able to join in Eucharistic adoration from immediately after Mass until midnight tonight. Uh, we hope that you do spend some time in prayer, at least one hour with our God. Let us stand and pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in the present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
that's all I'm going to do. I don't know how things have to get set up for tomorrow. So. I think I got it, Mr.